Well, Dr. Martin was replaced by J.C. Powell, and we were talking a little bit about him before the program. Um, things did change when when Powell took over. Um, do you remember anything about what, what those changes were like, um, particularly for faculty? Well, uh, mostly that there were, my recollection is there were not as many surprises. He didn't, he, he was less colorful than, than Martin. I don't remember a lot of dramatic changes. You might remind me of some, if you, if you can think of some. A graduation did change. We, I, I guess that's when we divided into um, three colleges in arts and sciences, and we had our separate, at least in December, we had separate graduations, and then they, I think, changed some of the other as well. But uh, that, it, I, to me, that was sort of a less colorful time than the Martin years, but there's a lot of things that I remember just among faculty, we had college retreats out at Maywoods, which were interesting and fun. We had uh, culture festivals where we did a lot of things uh, on different parts of the world. Uh, I think a lot of that was kind of faculty generated. I don't, I guess I don't remember a lot about uh, President Powell. Well, I, I think the, my memories of that is, uh, are that uh, uh, Dr. Powell was just less intimidating well, yes, to faculty yes, yes. And, and faculty felt more comfortable in pursuing mm -hmm. things like that. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the biggest symbol I thought of, of, of uh, J.C. Powell, and of course I was involved in faculty senate mm -hmm. in those days is that he came to the faculty senate meetings mm -hmm. and you know he exchanged views with faculty and if yeah. somebody disagreed with him that wasn't a big mm -hmm. deal yeah. uh, and of course it would have been uh, oh, with yes. dr martin yes uh, he was, yeah um, well then we come to the um, to the funderburk years this is the mid 80s to the uh, to the late 90s i guess uh, any any memories of the of the funderburk era uh, as well, far as you're concerned. Once again, I found him, uh, as I did with, with Martin and Powell, rather distant from faculty. I was not involved in faculty senate then. Uh, one of the things that, that Funderburg did was to get private offices for people, and uh, we were quite excited about that. We moved from the Wallace Building, uh, where at that time you could not open windows, and we had all sorts of heating and cooling problems and problems with mold growing on the walls and so forth, so we were delighted to get out of there and moved into the McCurry Building, and so that was nice to get private offices. He had quite a reputation of not wanting to spend money, and uh, I had two sort of interesting little not in personal encounters with him, but uh, I went uh, after, after the Soviet Union fell apart. Of course, I had to totally retool in my teaching. And so I went on a, an educational trip uh, to Russia in, I think, 1993 with a, a group of educators. And Eastern would not give me, and this was apparently a Funderburk uh, policy, uh, would not give money to go anywhere outside the United States. So they paid my uh, airfare as far as Washington, D.C., getting from Washington, D.C. to Moscow and back, I was on my own. <laughs> and so uh, the, the last day of the trip, we were sitting in, in Moscow in the airport and the, with the, these other educators, some deans and professors and maybe a college president or two, and everyone started talking about how much money their university gave them. And, uh, you know, oh, they paid all of my way, or well, they paid half my, whatever, we got around to me. And I said, well, they paid my way to Washington. And everyone looked really <laughs> sad and sorry for me. They said, well, we, at least we can buy you a beer, which they did. <laughs> <laughs> and then a woman who was a dean of a college up in New England somewhere said, well, we had to stay over an, a night at, uh, in London before we flew home. And she said, just, you know, come stay in my room. My college is paying for it. And uh, it's a double room anyway. So, but I, I, I told some people about that when I came back. I said, you know, it's embarrassing for Eastern. Yeah. Uh, and, and by the time my husband and I went to Eastern Europe uh, in the late 90s, uh, they had changed that policy and we were, it was still, an, it was an educational trip. We were rec recruiting students and, and our way was paid for that, so. Well, one of the things that Dr. Funderburg did, again, on the other side of that story is that he, as I recall, you know, plowed as much money as possible in faculty salaries yeah. and, and did raise the average faculty salary mm -hmm. for Eastern faculty, I think above all the other uh, regional comprehensive universities. Mm -hmm. And and I, 
I disagreed with a lot of my colleagues. I thought he didn't give, get enough credit for doing that. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, those are the kind of mm -hmm. choices that... Uh, First, as a woman, I started out behind on salary anyway, so... Yeah, well, so, that, that's and, another issue. Yes, yeah. it is. And actually, there was a settlement. I guess this was probably when Powell... Maybe it's when Martin was still there. It was a settlement with the Labor Department. The EOC, EEOC came in, and some of us got little bonus checks one year. <laughs> um... Now, in the last 10 years or so, um, we experienced two relatively short presidencies, Robert Kustra and Joanne Glasser. Um, can you th think of any of the notable contributions that those presidents made or how the campus changed during, during that time? Well, I was, I was really uh, thrilled when they went outside the campus to hire someone when Bob Custer came. I thought that was quite exciting. I still remember his inauguration out in the ravine and it was just a really high point. I thought he did a lot for Eastern. I know he's controversial, but I thought he helped to restore a, a sort of an academic flavor that had maybe uh, gotten a little bit lost in, in some of those early years. He gave a kind of presidential, a different kind of presidential leadership. I think he was more of an academic leader than, than Powell or Funderburk or, or Martin for that matter. Uh, he loved uh, academic things. He didn't just go to, you know, to football games. He went to musical performances and theaters. And he and his wife, Kathy Custer, was very involved in trying to create the, the campus culture, which was really sort of important at that time because this was a time when we were getting so many commuting students. It was before we had all the online courses, which is a whole different thing. But so many uh, commuting students. And uh, so they were trying to really make a, the university be sort of what a a university should be. And, and I thought that was, that was probably the, the greatest contribution that they made as far as me personally. This was the first president who actually sort of could call me by name and uh, was friendly. And you'd see him around campus and he would speak and he would actually come to things that, that we had. I actually sat on a panel discussion with him for a Super Tuesday. Uh, in I guess 2000, and and so I thought that was that was important. Uh, of course, he w he was a political scientist. Well, this by is true. Training. This is true. Uh, but but he went to and, and I said he, I said he did things other than other than football games. But one of the first things he did, uh, my husband and I actually got invited to to ride on a bus with a bunch of sort of selected people up to UK to see UK play Eastern <laughs> in, in the first year that that Bob Custer was here. And I think he did try to, to reach out in some ways to faculty in, in ways that hadn't been, hadn't been yeah, done before. Yeah. Well, what about, um, uh, well, let me, just, let me just reinforce what you just said. I thought that Bob Custer, more than any president that I've seen, was engaged in campus life mm -hmm. in, all across the board. I think and, that's what he really liked. And, 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 mm -hmm. and you know, he had, a, he had a radio program in, in this building where he brought people to campus that, mm -hmm. that were, you know, in, intellectually stimulating. And, and he, he read their books and he was able to... And you know what else he did? I had totally forgotten about that until you mentioned it. But I listened to that radio program and it wasn't just bringing people to campus. He did that. But he would talk to people on campus. He had students on and, and departments that I knew nothing about. And they were doing interesting things that I knew nothing about. Out, and he would talk to these people, and it was very interesting for me as a faculty member to, to learn a little bit more about uh, my university. And mm -hmm. he was a very good uh, mm -hmm. person at, at doing very good that. Interviewer. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. What about Joanne Glasser? Well, goodness, she uh, <laughs> certainly made her presence known around campus and <laughs> I guess around the state. She, well, I think she was very concerned with sort of wanting to, to brand EKU. I think some people thought she branded it with her herself and her picture maybe uh, a bit more than, than she should have. But uh, she was, I guess, also very much of a, of a person around campus. I think from what I understand, she was much more interested in, in fundraising than uh, Bob Custer was, and this was something that was needed at the time. I guess one of the things that, that I remember that I appreciate in these last several years, uh, and I don't know how much she was directly responsible for this, but I'm sure that if she hadn't liked it, it wouldn't have happened, is that we got, um, I don't remember what year this was, but we got some faculty development money and they told us basically, you know, you have $500 and you can use it for, for what you want to, if it's going someplace or buying books or whatever. And, and this was the first time in all the years that I'd been here that someone really trusted me to take some money, a little pot of money, and, and use it for something. 